Good afternoon, Australia, and a good morning, everyone else across the world. Good evening, America. Welcome back to Radio Tony. This is artwork you deserve, and this is our regular show in the business spot for the time being. Now, before I introduce you yet again to the gorgeous Tracy Eaton, here's what you need to know. Listening live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitch is our wonderful Paolo in the Philippines, who's ready to send you lots of links and we have lots of links in the show today that I want you to check out. And they are all linked to Tracy's website, which is tracyeaton.com. For those of you who are listening live, don't forget anything that we talk about is available on either Tracy's website or radiotony.com. Don't forget, if you're watching from YouTube, please like and subscribe to this channel. Feel free to share any of the shows across the internet as you see fit. The replays of these shows, whilst also available on YouTube, can be seen on Binge TV Networks, Hero Go TV Networks, and on the Tony TV channel app on all LG, Roku, and Samsung smart TVs across the world. Now this week we're back with Tracy again and we've been exploring what it's like to be an internationally acclaimed modern artist and what that looks like for Tracy's business. Now Tracy is incredibly talented and in fact the last three years running she has been commissioned to create the unique artwork for the Academy Awards nominees each year and has done a spectacular job. If you want to have a look at those creations, pop onto Tracy's website, tracyeaton.com, and look for the Hollywood collection. They're beautiful pieces indeed. As you know, each week we've been delving into art and we've also been showing you the progress of our commissioned piece of art that Tracy is creating specifically for me to show each and every one of you and those of you watching just what the process is like. So without any further ado, I'm going to welcome Tracy to the show. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning and thank you. Oh, good for afternoon, me again. rather. Afternoon. Oh my gosh, you were afternoon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I forget it's afternoon in Australia it's night time in America and uh, across the world hello to Germany Russia and the UK thank you for listening today now I think we we've been say speaking hi, last Much easier. yeah hello <laughs> Everyone across the world, thank you for joining us today. We love to have you with us each week and particularly for these shows. Having not um, worked with um, an artist of Tracy's Calibre, it's a real privilege that we get to share you with the world and they get to see how wonderful it is and the way that you create art uniquely for everyone. Now, last week we spoke about the business of art. So for each artist who aspires to greatness, there is a business process that sits behind that art creation. And last week, we spoke extensively about the balance between that beautiful creativity and the business stuff that you have to do to ensure that you're generating an income that connects with your passion. So we wanted to continue that discussion this week and delve in a little bit deeper about the expertise. Um, Tracy, as you know, we've mentioned that you have an extensive high 
high-level corporate background in marketing, sales, and health. And people um, might not know that this very much comes into play when you're talking to clients about commissioned or bespoke artworks. And so um, we wanted to delve into that a little bit further. And I thought we'd start today by talking about Tracy's own website and the connection between the display of her art and her branding colours, because it's a really important conversation to have. And the connections between art, energy and business are immense. Now, for listeners, Payo is going to pop Tracy's website into the chat box so that you can have a look at it. But Tracy, Welcome back to the show. Let's talk about Tracy Eaton branding and colours, the philosophy and the energy that sits behind you as a brand and your creativity. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to start with that. Actually, I'll start from the beginning because uh, in terms of when I first decided to do art professionally, my brand was very naive and I was all excited and focused on the creativity of, of what I was doing as opposed to actually the business components and really who my target audience was. So um, very quickly, I outgrew my first brand, uh, which was a lovely soft um, uh, font, quite quite wide. Yes. Uh, I had, I superimposed the background uh, of one of my art pieces into that. So that became the colors all very orange and gold and pretty. Um, And it was, it was lovely. Mm -hmm and very creative but not at all associated with what my actual uh, brand represents and who my target audience was so after a very short space of time I kind of took a step back and hmm okay so my brand has to grow up now (laughs) like my brand has to become representative of who I am in the marketplace and also what the Tracy Eaton brand represents. Because obviously, remember, yeah. whilst Tracy Eaton is a person, there is also a Tracy Eaton brand. A brand. And whilst the brand has part mm. of me in it, or always will be, it is also very much yeah. a standalone entity, which is like any business. So my logo, my, mm. you'll see, if any of you who are looking at my website, you'll see that my website is very much, um, it's quite dark. There's lots of black gold and white my logo is black on a white background yeah. obviously if it's on a black background we'll have a white logo and that was strategic yeah reason being is that gold is all about uh, abundance of all things wisdom and wealth and it's mm. very prestigious color and, ac- and that's across a lot of cultures as well so um, a lot of people perceive gold as being quite quite affluent quite quite beautiful and it, it's yes. revered. so that was an important component for me when I'm looking at my website or any print material I do throw aspects of gold throughout um in terms of it being black and my my my, my actual brand colors predominantly being black and white that was a bit of a no-brainer for me one it's very simple yeah it's easy to read yes. it's understandable and it's actually stands yes. out because people use color so much so a level of simplicity and peering it back I found to be or actually quite also in contrast to my artwork which yes. is normally very colorful so Beautiful it created, and bright. yeah it created a really good practical a good background for my artwork to do the talking Additionally, white, inherently when we're looking at emotional responses to colour, white is all about anything is possible. Uh, And to me, an openness. And those two things Mm -hmm. are absolutely inherent in terms of who I am as a person and the way that I live my life. Uh, So therefore needed to be part of what my brand is. It's clean, it's pure, but it's all about, as I said, anything, anything potentially that you could imagine is possible is possible. So that was an important part for me in the brand. What's that? Is it expansive? Is, is oh, very does much. white denote expansiveness and 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 that creative light almost? Creative light, probably not. But in terms of expansiveness, that's where I see openness comes in. It's it's big, it's wide. Uh, if yeah. you think about any possibility, then white is a color that can help that level of energy expand. Uh, and saying that the, mm-hmm. the other side of that is obviously it can whitewash, too much white can whitewash things as well. So it, it suppresses yeah. potentially what you're thinking. But used in the right way, then it, it is all about that openness. Um, black, on the other hand, is an interesting one because, in, once again, in a lot of cultures, black represents luxury, prestige, 
uh, like that level of power and confidence yeah. and that comes with um, luxurious brands and a lot of luxurious life yeah if you think about a lot of yeah. high-end um, products they will tend to use gold silver or black more often than not and they white. do and they if do. you have a look at their bra- are their actual logos they're very simplistic they are but they stand out uh, and so that is also mm-hmm. why I chose black as my highlight color for uh, my branding the logo itself yeah. is actually quite a masculine font now that was some mm-hmm. people found that interesting but masculine energy is all about action and driving forward and yeah. That, yeah. that level of, of power and confidence is what I wanted the brand to elicit as well. So when people see the Tracy Eaton brand, they don't see yeah. a, a crazy little artist in the corner, which was my first one. <laughs> what they actually see <laughs> is a professional, articulate, progressive uh, business mm. person who also creates mm. amazing product and artwork. So that was really important. Yeah. And my target demographic, obviously, I mean, we all need to understand that in business, is very much about people who... Yeah. They value beauty, yes, but also have a, a, a disposable income to be able to have yes. a painting on the wall and love the experience that money can't buy, who loves the, the beauty, yes. the joy, the excitement of having something that is unique and special and something that most people, are, you know, no one else is going to get. So that's why I do so many yes. commissions because my clients it's funny, my clients don't tend to refer me quickly because they want me to be their artist. Like, yes. you know, I, I have clients yes. who have multiple pieces of mine, which is I'd, something I didn't expect and I'm, I'm so grateful and humbled about. But I do think it's cute because they're just like, you're mine, you know, no one else can have you. And, and it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it, yeah. it means that not only is the brand working and the colours are representative of that, but also as a person, I am giving what they need. So... That's kind of cool. Mm. Yeah, that, that's the essence and yeah. the story of why I chose the colors and the logo that I have. And on my website, you'll see that I've really mixed that black and white and gold together to Definitely. create that level of, I believe, prestige and professionalism. Yeah, and and there's a lovely simplicity about your website as well. It's clearly defined it's clearly set up. Um, each of the individual spaces is almost like it's they're framed in their own uh, uh, frame of uh, the project, and mm-hmm. so it it stands out really nicely, doesn't it? Um, we talked a lot this week in our pre-show about the link between branding, colours and your business and it um, it really um, came home for me that if you're going to invest in branding for your business that actually needs to come through everything that you do which it does with brand Absolutely. Tracy Eaton and um, we wanted to talk about some of the branding color and representation of a business by going through some of the examples of artwork and projects that you've done one of the bigger ones was um, indeed the ruby connection and we've got a link directly to the ruby connection which payo will pop into the chat box for you but it's tracyeaton.com forward slash the dash ruby dash collection now tracy can you tell the audience about that that it was a huge undertaking for you, um, but a beautiful one. So can you tell the audience about the progress of that project? Yeah, certainly. And I think it's been fair to say that it was a huge project for everyone who was involved because when when Ruby was first uh, born or the, the concept of it was born, the developers at the time were looking to create something here on the Gold Coast uh, that was very different um, bigger, brighter, yeah. larger, really representative of the lifestyle that we live here uh, and, and something that stood out. So the, the idea mm-hmm. from day one was about it being very grand, not so much opulent, not six mm. star, but something that families yeah. could still come and, and enjoy and create beautiful memories, but something that people hadn't actually seen on the Gold Coast before. So there was, yeah. I, was I was most impressed actually with the uh, the contacts of the C, the general manager and the marketing manager 
of the company when who, who were my contacts because that the, the level of research yeah. the, the things that they looked at like that was it was a, such a considered decision every single component of yeah. that development was well considered and thought out which I was really impressed about they took their time they got it right it was amazing so mm, myself, yeah excuse me for myself when we were creating the well when we originally started speaking about creating artwork it was very much about keeping in mind that that part, their vision of that uniqueness and that was was still there. But also, like I said, the ability for people to feel joyous and happy and have something that reminds them of an incredible time in their own holiday because that's what it's all about. And creating yeah. a space where people felt like they wanted to come back again. At the same time, we also wanted to make sure that every floor of that hotel complex was a, um, a different a different vibe, different zone, different feelings, yes. so that if you did come back again and yes. you were on level five and then you were staying on level 20, it felt like you're in a mm -hmm. different place, yet at the same time felt you felt comfortable because it was familiar. So that was a really, yeah. really fun thing to do because all of a sudden it gave great scope for me as an artist to go, all right, we had now have... There was 30 floors in the first tower. There was, it was going to be a four-tower development. So it was 1,600 wow. um, 1600 room uh, tourist facility, which would have been inc was incredible. Fortunately, the whole development yeah. didn't see fruition, but the first tower certainly did. And, um, it, yeah, the developers that, that uh, ended up, unfortunately, being having to, to go into receivership. It's is terrible. But, uh, but the first yes. tower itself was incredible. Uh, it's still there. And, yeah, so we had, yeah, still there. We had 30, oh, I think 32 floors, I think it was. Um, the oh, wow. Obviously on the top. And so we had 30 for each floor. You walk out of the elevator and there was a large 2.2 metres by 0.8 piece of art that, that greeted you as you walked out of the Big. elevator. On each floor. Mm -hmm. So that's the starting point, which mm -hmm. was just gorgeous. And then we obviously had prints that I created, which we'll go through in a second, on through the corridors on each floor that linked back to that main piece. Match. So, yeah, oh, so over the course wow. of, um, I think it was about 18 months in total. I, it was a little while ago now, yes. but I think it was around 18 months mm -hmm. that project took for me to create all of the pieces and and all of the prints. Um, we progressively painted each one. I would get yes. periodically, I'd paint three or four of them and then I'd get the, the guys to come in and just confirm they were happy. So they got progress would... um, engagement all the way through. So we knew that, I mean, we stored mm. them obviously for them, but I knew that we we're on the right track. As I said, each piece was yeah. different. Each floor was a different color tone. We matched the color tone with the furnishings that they had on that floor as well. And to make sure that in true, in true course with my brand being unique, that their product was yes. unique. Uh, that's why we painted originals. Uh, nobody else on the Gold Coast have had them. Yeah. Um, yes. And to keep and to keep all prints that we were doing unique. What I did do is once the the the, the foyer piece was finished, piece I then, was done. Yep. I then blew up. I looked at little sections. Took we took photographs of those little sections blew them up yeah. and then turned them into the print. So every single print in that entire premises was also different, which I loved. Wow. I love on, on all the floors, on yeah. all the floors and corridors. And therefore yeah. I, they definitely linked to the, the original because it was right mm -hmm. there and it was a section of that painting. Which So that was a really fun thing to think about doing as well. We also then painted originals for the penthouses. So not only did we have the... the the foyers we had original artwork i think there was two in each penthouse yes two in each penthouse plus two mm -hmm. large large originals for um yes the penthouse floor and the and also the, obviously in the foyer the bar area and reception uh restaurant area so it was yeah. a great project really great project and at the end of the day the one thing it came back to is creating a, a sense of vibrancy fun sun mm. energy the very things that the gold coast yes. represents. people see the gold coast in the way that we live such a outdoor life here because of the weather <laughs> yeah and, and and i guess i have to say also the contrast because on one side you've got the beach and then you've got the hinterland so i really wanted to incorporate yes. all of those things into all the pieces we were doing yeah and the 
I remember when we were talking um, earlier in the week, the, they wanted pieces that the guests would remember seeing. They wanted them to be memorable. And we talked about the fact that artwork has the ability to anchor you to a time and place like nothing else. So they Sorry. remember walking into the reception area or the bar area or whichever area it was, it's memorable for them because of that size and vibrancy and energy and colour from that that art piece. Um, And knowing that you have the ability to create such a an amazing array of art pieces for uh, in one location gives to your um, uniqueness as well because not a lot of artists have that same ability, do they? They, they tend to stick to a particular genre, genre, genre and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And you're right, yeah, and yeah. I think we had yeah, this yeah. last week, I've been told a lot by lots of different people that I need to stick to one style, as I said last week, but... I, 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 I could not do that. I, I, I would yeah. find myself um, very bored and I feel like I yeah. think this is coming from a health, my health background as well. Every single mm. person is different and every single person needs to be treated differently uh, and there is no, yeah. no one thing that is the same. So what in my mind when I'm painting or I'm creating, I'm, I'm not creating these pieces for me, I'm creating them for somebody. No. And I might not know who that person yes. is right now, but somebody will look at that and resonate. So I feel like if I treat my art in the, the same way all of the time, then I'm truly not giving what we can give Um as opposed to painting what I feel like a person needs. Yeah. That's why I think my art changes. Yeah, yeah. Tracy, we had a bit of discussion about, um, and again, this relates back to branding and colours and the absolute importance of colours in branding. We had a brief discussion about uh, Google. And um, when I was um, Googling Google (laughs) and the (laughs) Googleplex, (laughs) Yep. <laughs> um, I was fascinated with the discussion about Google's approach to creating a workplace that embodied not only their vision and mission, but the way that they wanted to interact with their staff around productivity and relaxing and all the rest of it. And um, you talked to me about, pointed me in uh, Google's direction because their branding is so uh, known across the world and it's the colours, isn't it? It's the colours, but also their ethos behind that. You are dead right. So we're obviously when Google first yeah. released themselves, they were streets ahead of so many other businesses in terms of how they mm. used colour to encourage behaviours. And, and when we were talking, you know, I, I think I've also said this before, but to reiterate, you think about a lot of corporate environments, they tend to be grey, they tend to be white. Um, yes. as I said before, white can get a little overpowering if it's too much. It's quite, it whitewashes emotions and energy and everything else. Yeah. Grey can be very depressing. Um, and if you think about a, a world devoid of colour, think about even big cities. Yeah. Like at, least, at least New York's got Central Park because of all the beautiful colour that comes from, from nature. Mm. But if you're devoid of colour, we start to feel energyless, quite and almost quite depressed. Mm. So when Google first yeah. came out, I, I wasn't painting full time then. Well, it was years ago. Yeah. And I was, I was still in the yeah. health. I was most impressed because I, you can tell the way that they have used colour to activate people, to get them thinking quickly, uh, a, a softer, yeah. nurturing space when they want people to chill out. Like the, the way that they yeah. have done that has been superb. Uh, which is why I mentioned it to you. Yeah. Yes, because they they understood yeah. very quickly the energetic impact of having particular colours in a particular space. You know, if you want someone to not get fired up, you're not gonna you, you don't want to you know don't put them in a red room because they're going to be they're going yeah. to take action. They're yeah. going to be bold. They will feel more powerful or more confident. Um, conversely, if you want them to you know fall asleep, don't put them in yellow. Don't the same thing. You know you know. Yeah. because yellow activates the mind so you don't want to have somebody who you want to totally chill out surrounded by yellow walls Did. so and, and artwork is the same when you're putting it into a corporate environment let's say you're setting up a new reception area 
we can create a painting based around your vision and what it is that you want to communicate with your yes. client. And while sub, uh, consciously they may not even understand that that's what's happening, subconsciously they will get a feeling and, a, and, a, and an energy around what it is that they're seeing. And that's the sort of yeah. little messaging, I guess, that as a business we can impart with our clients so people understand what you're about. Yeah. I love that. I get Tracy, excited about it. That's I... what Google have done. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was reading about one of the um, other um, business areas that you did for um, a local real estate agent. And I was fascinated about the integration between what they wanted to use in terms of their branding and what they specifically wanted to create in that room where your painting was going to be again there's a we have a link there um it's under tracyeaton.com ray white um labrador tracy the branding of ray white is quite simple so it's the yellow the black and the white but the painting you did for their meeting room had special requirements didn't it <laughs> was a lot more complex than the, the brand yes and I really yes. wanted to obviously make sure that the Ray White brand yellow was incorporated into the painting and the yellow is very bright mm. so that's the first thing because it is so it's happy it's joyous and it's activating um but knowing obviously the the uh, owners of that company as I do because they, they were a client beforehand so they engaged me again yes we really also wanted to incorporate the um new opportunities so this is a new office for them mm. it's it's separating yes. out their sales and their management they obviously want to continue to grow and develop so for yes. me that was a really important component in terms of what we paint for that particular space it's a, that their office space is seen from the from the outside so we yeah. want people to yeah. feel like this is a progressive go ahead modern organization that have their own on the ball so uh, and also for the owners, I wanted to provide something that helps encourage money flowing into their space. So the use of green wow. and the use of gold was really important. As an yeah. aside for that as well, um, their brief was that they wanted to have something that looked like a, like a topographical view, like when you're looking down yeah. Um, yeah. at water. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. So we wanted something like that, but in an abstract form. So that I also yeah. wanted to bring in water. Now, interesting for these guys, one of the, particularly the um, uh, Sandy, one of their favorite colors, blue, blues and green. And the blue yes. that I chose was yeah. very vibrant and I wanted to incorporate that it as well. Is. So when they see that painting, not only do they see themselves, they see the brand and I'm making sure energetically that we've got money flowing through. So I call, I call that, yeah. uh, that painting um, Fields of Fortune because it was bringing money yeah, through and it, and into just, a space that needed yeah. to be developed. Yeah. Very and it's, vibrant. And it's very the, vibrant. yes, it's the centerpiece of the room. Everything else is kind of muted, but there's this spectacular artwork that Tracy's done for their meeting room and it embodies okay. everything that Tracy said. So go and have a look at that, people, um, on Tracy's website. One of the other... And when, um, and when, uh, Yep, go. Sorry, I was going to say, but when you walk into reception, you see the reception mm. logo colour and the piece of art at the same time. So they also need to ah. integrate as well. It's not, there's a, a short walk, but you can see the two together. So it needed to integrate and bring the whole office space together too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fun. One of the other interesting yeah, one of the other interesting um, <coughs> projects we talked about was the work that you did for um, the night markets and we talked about the interaction between their vision and mission and their colour. So can you talk the audience through that particular project because it really was very different. Sure. So Night Quarter, which is a, as you're right, say a night market, so we're on the Gold Coast and now back yeah. there on Sunshine Coast now. But they mm. are uh, an organisation who are really about support, not only supporting arts, but helping people to like be creative, progress, once again, grow anything, mm. be who you are, all of that. They're really inclusive. <laughs> Excuse me. And one thing that they really wanted to make sure they had is something that was iconic that represented their level of 
pushing forward and you know maybe pushing boundaries yes. and and including everybody yes. in, in that way and that so when people come to came to night quarter they had something that they could take a photo of and so then over a period of years this thing becomes an integral part of what people see when or about that they remember see this and they remember night quarter so yes. we decided <laughs> that to do, to do something really different uh, i would create yes. a sculpture out of a mannequin uh, which we actually painted in magentas and soft pinks predominantly and then a bit of black. Now, I chose those colours because those colours are all about u- universal love and self-love. So that was an important component yeah. considering what I was going to create. And what I wanted yeah. to do was showcase the history of sexuality of women in terms of not yeah. behaviours but also perception. And that kind of evolved mm. from when we were talking to um, Night Quarter owners about the fact, as I said, they really want to show progression and push boundaries. So yeah. Um, yeah. Magdalene was born. So Magdalene, if you go back in history, I think she was a prostitute yes. and all that stuff. So that was interesting in and of yeah, itself. Yeah. Um, so I started doing some research all around sexuality of women and um, behaviours and how we were yeah. perceived or how sexuality was perceived across generations from 1700s through to now Mm. so she has a whole story attached to her but what was interesting about her is not not just what we painted her what colors we painted but I painted her um, in bondage gear she had a hat she had no hair intentionally I painted a corset on her it was all painted and I I glued her because she was a sculptor glued her to a uh um a gar- an old-fashioned garden setting so it looked like she was sitting in the 1800s but here was this chick who was mm. hardcore uh, BDSM and then also handcuffed to the chair with a whip the resting on her, on her lap so the whole contrast between here is somebody who is who's sitting there in a in a provocative space looking provocative yes. in an old-fashioned yes. setting where we're needing 1800s to be um, was the was the mm-hmm. was the contrast that we were looking for, and therefore, you know, and the whole story around that is show, is shown when you so when you get your photo with Magdalene, you can actually see the story behind her. Great fun, yeah. good project, and as as you said, really representative of the psychology behind that company. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The night quarter was um, just the best place to visit when it was on its space um, uh, on the Gold Coast and it was full of just fabulous little um, eateries and performances Mm. and performance art and it was really a great. They're um, very committed to the arts but it's more than that. They're committed to people being their own own person and allowing yourself to give anything a go, I guess. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Art often projects what society is grappling with at that particular time, and that's a perfect example, isn't it, Tracy, of some of the conversations that are getting more and more relevant about women's place in society and how we're treated and how we're perceived. And um, art is a conduit for those discussions as well that's an important point to make in it, talking it does, about art yes. creation it does it facilitates it re- conversation and I don't know if I've said this yeah. um, through our shows but I remember years and years ago going to an art competition and I was mm. looking around and I you know was viewing the the winning painting and yes. I felt it, it was it was I, I thought it was a terrible painting not the technique but the actual yeah. subject of it and it was yes. white with black um just lips drawn and then like blood mm-hmm. just dripping and just one yeah. little drip and I was like oh it was making me feel so yes angst, so much angst and I and here I am crossing my arms that tells you even this is this is like yes. I'm talking 12 years yes. ago and it still has this impact with me and I remember saying to the um gallery owner the manager at the time it's like I don't understand why 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 did that win? There's so many other beautiful yeah. pieces because I'm all about joy. It doesn't mean other people, other artists are. Yes, um, yes. And he turned around and he said to me, look, an artist has done their job when they um, 
make the viewer feel something and they elicit a response good yes. bad, otherwise it doesn't matter because those responses will create discussion you can, we can have 10 people looking yes. at a piece of art and you'll all be feeling something different and the point different. is the fact that you are all sitting there talking about it means our job is done and you are right those yes. discussions often need to be had and may often not be being had case in point the sexuality of women um, and people's yes. openness to accept change and all that sort of thing and and you know with and that with Magdalene's case it was about making you know women mm. d- don't deserve to be squashed under the table um it's a, and it's okay yeah. for people to be forward uh, particularly when we're talking about sexuality um so yeah mm. so you're right art can allow us to and uh, begin and facilitate conversations that may never have been had or yeah. definitely need to be had people are too scared to do it Mm. artists aren't musicians aren't authors aren't we will push boundaries just because that's that's inherently I guess who we are we think that's what you're called to do Mm. it's what we're called to do we're here to help people understand that it's not necessarily just this in life there's so much more um, and it's okay to not necessarily experience it but at least talk about it accept it see that it's there absolutely 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 so if if you yeah, yeah. If, if you see a piece of art and it makes you feel a certain way, then that artist's job is absolutely yeah. done. And it doesn't have to be you you doesn't love it. You might hate it. Or, tr- yeah. or, or as in Tracy, there's a huge visceral uh, reaction to that painting, but it caused mm. you to stop and think and you can still remember that painting Never 12 that. years later. And I've never yeah. forgotten that message either. As an artist, it's probably one of the biggest yeah. things that I learned really early on is that no, every, the people don't have to love your work. They just have to understand no. that it's going to create an emotion. And, and if we are, if our art is devoid of emotion, then we are not, it's do, not giving what, we, what we, we can be giving. And that's why it's so important yeah. when coming back to, to branding and colour and getting that right, yeah. that's why it's so important. Because I said before, if we, if we can create a piece that helps you communicate your message, if that piece is not communicating the right message, then you're missing your target audience. And you may yeah. not be able to actively have the, the conversations that you really want to be having because they are mis- missing the point of who you are. So yeah. it's huge. And yeah. once again, that engages yeah. and starts a conversation about your brand and it could be way wrong. So it's, it's yes. vitally important that you get that right. I was, the other thing that I was going to point out too for the audience, just remember that Tracy's background prior to painting is in corporate marketing, sales, health. So when you um, work with Tracy, you get that level of expertise and experience in behind the creativity of the art that she does so for a business in particular who's wanting to have a certain brand a certain thought from people when either they walk into their premises or they meet with them um, you want your brand to be memorable and if you're ever going to do something um, investment wise to create um, that image around your brand then employing an artist of Tracy's level of expertise is an investment in your business and branding forever because that one piece that that Tracy might create for your reception area anchors the clients that walk into your business and even if it's um, an electronic meeting Uh, We're all Zooming. Imagine if you had a piece of artwork as your Zoom background that's created for one of your meeting rooms, but it's all about your branding, the energy of your branding, the mission and vision of your brand and your business. It anchors in people's heads. It anchors the client's memory of your branding and business, which is a really important consideration in this day and age when there's so much competition. Um, so just to change more, track. So, sorry, I just couldn't yeah. give you one more Go. example. That's yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a, I had a yeah. client who is a bank manager and his office it had no natural light coming through and very traditionally bank. You know, there's, there's piles yes. of paper and it's a yes. little 
than yes. being chaotic. So as you, we all understand, when you go to see your bank manager, manager, more often than not, there's a lot of stressed emotions that are already coming up and bubbling up within you. You're nervous, you are, you might be excited, yeah. but you're petrified that you might not get what you want, or there's often some fear associated yeah. with what's going on. Mm-hmm. So when we were speaking mm-hmm. with him, um, it, well, this wasn't representing his brand, but it was, represent, it was actually a yeah. painting that we created to not only help him relax, so therefore it was based around something that a memory of his, but just as importantly, yeah. so when his clients, this is what he wanted, when his clients walked into his office, yeah. they could look at this piece and just breathe, just go, oh, it's okay. So yeah. we, it's okay. So we, we used, a, as I said, a memory of his, which happened to be a rainforest, but I actually used a lot mm. of activating colors as well. So it wasn't just dark greens. There was lots of yellow. There was a little bit of orange. There was colors that help people to feel relaxed, fun, a little bit yeah. energetic and happy. So they had a level of yeah. calmness and happy, which help for him, that helps him to have discussions and open communications that may or may not have happened before because people were feeling yeah. intense. So that's how you can use color wow. to help people communicate. And it works. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, just we wanted to showcase um, Tracy's diversity in art creation. So the, the, the project that I wanted to talk about last was this beautiful fish tank restoration, which is really <laughs> unique and stunning. And Tracy, it was an at home. So it was a client's personal space. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and they had um, a waterfront property, but this magnificent, huge fish tank. Can you tell the audience about that project? Sure. That was actually really fun. So once again, they were an existing client. Yeah. Um, but, and prior to me coming into the scene, their house was lovely, yeah. but it was very white. It was very little colour. Yeah. The biggest colourful yeah. thing was their big, lovely red leather lounge, which they meant a lot to them. Historically, they've had it for a long time and they mm. loved it. So he was from Greece, uh, so water was important. So this fish tank Uh was front and centre in their house. But when you walked in the front door, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And it was beautiful. And what they'd done Mm. inside the tank was glorious. The tank, however, was situated in a brown veneer uh, cabinetry, sorry, cabinetry. And it didn't fit, like the brown didn't go anywhere. It was white everywhere else, this bright red, this bright red couch, beautiful blues and greens outside because, you know, as I said, he liked water, and then this yes. brown. And it, they they did not like it at all, and they couldn't figure out. They was like, oh, I just, what, what do we do with this? And I was like, well, why don't we turn it into a painting? So what mm. I did is that I, I took the, um, the measurements, we created a, a canvas, yes. the exact ratio so we wouldn't lose anything when we replicated. I painted yeah. um, an underwater, abstract underwater scene that incorporated yeah. the blues that he loves, the red of their couch, little bits of bronze yeah. and gold because it's underwater um, and it's a bit of ground yeah. as well. And uh, that's the other side, splashes of red and we, then uh, printed that onto a wallpaper because we wanted it to be long lasting. Mm-hmm. It was a commercial grade yeah. wallpaper, so we could wipe it down. Yeah. If it got splashes of water, it would be okay. And then we actually yeah. installed that wallpaper onto the cabinetry all around the fish tank. So now the fish tank looks just like it's underwater. They oh, and yeah. it is a massive feature, as I said. It's right in the center of their home. So when you walk in, yeah. That's the that space. That's the first thing you see, and then obviously it works well oh. with the piece they purchased from me, which is all in blues and aquas and gold. So it all just ties in perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Great, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So in terms of your projects, effectively you can go from the individual commissions works, which we're going to show everyone the progress of the commission in a minute, but it goes from that one-on-one client to a development of, say, 1,600 rooms and 30 floors and all the rest of it to a commercial premises, a real estate company, to someone's personal home where they can you can create things around um, wallpaper, around particular objects uh, and particular energy or um, what you want to create in that room. So 
you might have a particular room that is a little bit basic and boring and you want it to represent fun, frivolity, or you want to rep it to represent a retreat or relaxation. And either of any of those uh, energies or concepts, you can work and create something of that course. your client values for forever. And yeah. just a reminder that these are unique pieces of art. They go up in value. They do not devalue. They can't be not. No, replicated. <laughs> They're unique. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Of course they go up in value. They definitely go up in value. <laughs> we <Yeah>. will... <laughs> when um, people are watching these shows in a 100 years' time and go, oh, my God, I have a Tracy Eaton, <laughs> that's what you get when you work with yep. Someone of an artist of Tracy's calibre because there's a lot that goes into not just the planning, there's the psychology of colour, there's the energy of the colours that you use in a particular painting. And you can create anything from uh, neutral to vibrant, relaxed to energetic. It's all in the colour and the, the way that all you the um, move those colours together. Yep, very much so. And that's why it's so important for me to be able to talk with people at length about what it is that they're yes. looking for. And as I said, I think I can't remember if I said this last week or when we were talking, I don't paint pretty pictures. I paint no. uh, I paint I, I paint energy, I paint a moment, I paint yes. a passage in time, whatever it might be, so that person can remember that forever. So it's not about the yes. subject, it's not about the colours, it's about how you want someone to feel. That's why I need to get inside yeah. people's heads so much, like I got inside yours. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In a really nice way. Absolutely. Of course. In a really nice way. <laughs> the other thing. The other thing I was going to point out too is when Tracy's um, focused on her creative artwork and she and we talked about this in previous shows, the fact that Tracy segments her week so that she has the art of business and business of doing art on certain days and then other days are allocated so that Tracy can just paint because and the reason that Tracy does this and it's important for people to remember that to create in that space requires an energy and mm. Tracy needs to be in that flow of that energy be thinking about that client person business or individual as she's painting because the intuition for that particular artwork and including Tracy's energy goes into that painting so yes. Tracy you need to segment that time so that you give time energy and space to that particular painting so you can't be interrupted by business calls or, or business on those days and I know Wednesday is your creative day or one of your creative days where you like to just zone out and paint and um, I can see a painting in the background of you today is that one you worked on yesterday uh actually but it's quite no, beautiful it's one i worked on uh -huh. this morning actually even though Thursday. oh there Thursday, you go um yes yes obviously still work in progress but yes i yes i can't wait i can't wait to get get them done it's been sitting for a while i need to I, I, it's in my head so hardcore that i need to, I need to finish it now yes so yes you wait. need yeah 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 so there'll be, there'll be a so bit Tracy, bit more sorry yes you want to see your painting now before we finish no, no. I, <laughs> I was just going to say that the colours have been drawing my eye all morning. So from a personal perspective, those colours are drawing my eye into that painting the whole interview. So I've got to this point and I can't wait anymore. I'm like, tell me about that painting because the colours are drawing me in. And then oh, that so leads into the, yeah, so they're, they're beautiful. Me, I love black as a base. Black as is, 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 yes. It's a bit mysterious, it's it's dark, it's moody, mm -hmm. it's got that yeah. level of confidence yeah. and power behind it. But the red yeah. is there is all about passion. This is a two, this is a couple who yes. are undressing each other. That's what it's going to be. Yes. Um yes. so that red's all about passion and sharing of that energy. 
uh, and pink is mm-hmm. about love as well. So I wanted to soften that. So we've got yeah. some hardcore masculinity going on and some hardcore feminine yeah. energy happening. And the combination of the two, I think, works really well. Someone said to me years ago, I yeah. can't remember who it was, never put pink and red together. Oh, my God, I do it all the time. Um, yeah, it's it beautiful. Amazingly. So the other cup, there's not going to be many more colours that I'm introducing, which is unusual for mm-hmm. me. I, I, only use, I use quite a few normally. But I really want yeah. this these colours to speak for itself. I'm thinking at this stage probably a bit of gold. I may change it to orange. I'm going to see how that morphs just because her hair is going to be textured and flowing backwards. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, watch the space. Beautiful. That'll be, I'll, that'll be one you'll have to see on my website. <laughs> Absolutely. Finished, Absolutely. And it's okay, now, now it's the exciting. Oh, yes, yours. Right. Oh, so yes. Yes, I can see sparkly. Mm, yeah so I'll, I'll just change them over for you yep yep awesome so you can see listeners how big that painting is so tracy's easel that she works on um for most of her paintings i think she told me it's 2.5 meters long so these are not small tiny artworks they're quite beautiful big artworks um you, you can see the by gym. the size when tracy no oh my goodness can you see it oh i can oh look at the clouds aren't they beautiful so we've got a lot more color back in yes which is what the plan always was trying to show you guys as close as i can um you can see like the light of the sun shining through those storm clouds they're just beautiful so when we let me have a second and you can see how big and heavy that is (laughs) so a substantial piece of art definitely good size so when we start to explain i guess to everybody who's been watching or seeing today as you know when we first started speaking it was really important to be able to create a space of relaxation and calm for you and yes the more i painted i've been painting for you and Oh, this to, to, the more I've been painting for you, the more I thought it's important to include pink. We were talked about pink initially, but it needed to yeah. be obviously there. Um, and I think that's because there's a bit of love coming your way, which everyone needs from time to time. And I feel like that's important for you. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing I thought was interesting is when we first started speaking, I know how much you love texture and that impasto look. Yes. This yes. has been interesting for me because I also love texture. Yeah. As I've been painting yes. this more and more and more, I kept stopping. You have no idea how much texture I've wiped off and take because I felt like. Oh, really? Yeah, because I felt like I wanted this space to be so soft and so calming. And the more texture I was adding, the more um, yeah. vibrancy and you know, what higher energy it was becoming and it was detracting yeah. from what yeah. I felt like you need. So there you go. <laughs> so yeah. there is definitely... That's so there, cool. But it's, it's a lot more subtle than I would normally do. Normally I'd be chucking a palette knife through the water and um, <laughs> <laughs> making it so much more that I just, the, yeah, I just kept on wiping it back. So in the end I went, you know what? Stop fighting your intuition and just go with this. Yes. So that's... That's where yeah. we're at. I just, yeah. I keep, again, my eyes are drawn to almost that centre point where the light and the pink are sort of coming through. And it just, for me, um, and this is a very personal um, reflection, for me, I can actually feel that energy in my heart space. I can actually, like, just looking that, I just, I can't quite put into words, I can't quite articulate that energy feeling that I feel when I look at that space in a painting. 
I've never had that experience before. Um, so I'm just letting the audience know that that's, that's new for me to look at a painting and feel that way. Often I've been drawn to paintings or I can sit in front of them and stare for ages. But for this particular one that Tracy's created, that spot in that painting is just I don't know, it's really beautiful and I, I feel very calm, relaxed, just looking at it. And it is, as you've said, that's what you felt that I needed and that's what you've painted. And this is the thing about uh, when someone do um, an artwork specifically for you, if they're um, as wonderfully creative as Tracy is, they will tap into your soul and interpret what they're feeling, the energy that they're feeling, and they will put it on the canvas for you. So that's not something that I can do. That's not something I can even articulate, but Tracy can and that's a gift to the world and I absolutely believe that it's a gift that it needs to be shared with everyone because it's uniquely Tracy and it's uniquely the way that she paints no other painter is going to paint they may paint a little similar but they're not going to embody the way that Tracy's process works and that's what makes Tracy Eaton artwork spectacularly unique and beautiful oh, and I just couldn't really be happier you. thank you oh it, it I I need to I need for the audience to understand just how special your gift and your paintings are to the world I absolutely believe that they're very special because of your process and that's the tapping in to the energy, the colours um, and, and the process that you use to create your art pieces. I'm incredibly you, privileged that I've had the opportunity to work with you, Tracy. And I encourage our listeners and anyone watching today, jump onto that website, have a look at what Tracy creates because it's magnificently beautiful and absolutely unique and you have the ability to tap into that too to create those spaces within your home your business your development your resort your meeting room your conference <laughs> center limitless Anywhere. limitless opportunity to create and my friends, we have again run out of time, but we will be back <laughs> next week for one more show with Tracy. Um, and we will be able to show you either the almost completed commissioned work, but it will be getting close to being finished. Next week, oh we'll gosh. be back with Tracy talking a bit more about the art of business and the unique things that Tracy does and creates with her art and her gift to the world. Tracy Eaton, thank you so much for coming thank on the you, show Jane. this week. Thank you so much for having me. Everyone. Next week. See you all next week. We will be back next week with another show, our final show with Tracy. So you better not miss it, people. Um, <laughs> she may be not able to do this ever again because I know that she has so much inquiry coming into her at the moment. And I know that there are people bustling to get her artwork. So she's going to be coming, uh, becoming busier and you'll have to get in. If you want Tracy to create something for you, your brand or your business, you're going to have to get in quick because uh, she's becoming busier as we speak. Tracy Eaton, thank you so much. Wonderful audience. We'll be back next week with another show of um, Artwork You Deserve with Tracy Eaton. Bye for now. Bye.